Hey everyone, I'm the Canadian Lad, and I just watched the final episode of What If in Pointy Fabic Speed. That was some ending, eh? It had everything, connected all the previous episodes, had some amazing showdowns, and some very good character arcs. I'm gonna break it all down scene by scene and show you lads some of the incredible details that I caught in slow motion. But first, let me thank today's sponsor, Dr. Squatch. I feel like there's a stigma around men and personal care products where men don't want to fuss up with the products used on their skin. But I think Dr. Squatch helps end that stigma by offering great smelling soap made with clean ingredients. Lads, your skin deserves to be treated with care. You can definitely feel the difference and I challenge you lads to grab a bar of Dr. Squatch and spot the difference yourself between Dr. Squatch and your normal shower soap. I can actually identify the ingredients on the label unlike most men's soaps. My favorite scent is definitely Fresh Falls, which is accurately named, it just smells fresh. It smells like a clean load of laundry on a glacier top. It's like I'm showering in nature. I've actually been complimented on my smell this week and the only change I've made was using Dr. Squatch. They're so confident in their soap, they're willing to give you your money back if you don't don't think this is the best soap you've ever used. No questions asked. It's available in the US and in Canada. New customers can get 20% off on orders of $20 or more. Just use my code DSCLAD, that's DSCLAD, and click the link in the description below. This episode picks up exactly after episode 8, where we've seen Carnage from Ultron. And this one asks the question, what if the Watcher broke his oath? The Watcher brings together a group of remarkable characters to see if they can become something more. He recruits Captain Carter, Star Lord T'Challa, Eric Killmonger, Gamora, Party Thor, Strange Supreme, and lastly Black Widow. It opens in the Lumerian Star where Captain Carter is on the same mission as Steve Rogers was in Captain America the Winter Soldier. Her being on the same mission and fighting the same enemy indicates that her story is almost identical to Steve's, except that the hero is different. Now notice in live action it was Crossbones aka Ramlo who was briefing the team while Steve was listening. 25. Top mercs led by this guy, George Batroc. But in this universe, Peggy is the one doing the briefing. 20 or so charmers, led by this one, Batrock. This goes to show a major difference between her and Steve. She's more of an active member of S.H.I.E.L.D. than Steve ever was, and that's why she knows more about the mission. And I like how she also made changes to her suit, which looks entirely different from what we've seen in episode 1. It used to be blue and red, but now it looks a lot more grey. This is another nod to Steve in live action. Now while Peggy was fighting Batrock, the Watcher unveils himself to Peggy and chooses her for the mission. Cut to the Dairy Queen which we saw at the end of episode 2, where Ego now has come to use his son as a battery to power his own planet. As Peter Quill never became Star-Lord in this universe, so it was relatively easy for Ego to extract the powers of his son, until Star-Lord T'Challa shows up. In comes the Watcher who then recruits T'Challa. Now I absolutely loved Peter Quill's description of the Watcher. Hang back with the uh, giant baby man cape dude. Cut to Nita Valir where we see Iron Man in a full-blown Sakarian suit, while Gamora dons her father's armor. Now Itri the Dwarf King is also there who is helping Tony and Gamora to forge this version of the Infinity Gauntlet. Gamora is then taken from here by the Watcher. Now you may ask, what the hell is happening here? Where did Tony and Gamora come from? And what are they doing forging a new Infinity Gauntlet? And why does Itri have both of his hands intact? Because in the main timeline, after Itri made the Gauntlet for Thanos, Thanos spared his life in exchange of his hands, so that he may not be able to create another one. So in this universe, Gamora killed Thanos and took over. And as for Tony Stark, well, in, in this timeline, he couldn't make it back to Earth in Avengers 1 and was directly dumped into car. There he became a full-grown gladiator, there for this suit. This episode was supposedly coming this season, but Marvel apparently couldn't finish it on time due to the pandemic, so they moved it to season 2. The Watcher then takes Eric Killmonger. Now Killmonger's profile can be put into the same category as Peggy or T'Challa. He murdered his way to the top, so it was a bit of surprise that the Watcher would go for someone like that. But of course, he doesn't do anything without a reason, and there's a big reason why the Watcher chose Killmonger. The Watcher needs someone who will eventually turn his back against the team, and that's why he chose Killmonger. Killmonger. Now lastly, Thor gets picked up as he was fighting a bunch of Ultron sentries. He says he had a date, but because of this bot, it was interrupted. And notice Marvel used the same technique to get rid of his cape, as in both cases, Thor was in the middle of a fight. You've been, you've been Haven't you too? Thor. Ah. Thor. The way the Watcher was getting interrupted in the middle of his speech kind of reminded me of this from Thor Ragnarok. So deep in Asgard. Hang on. Give it a second. I swear, I'm not even moving, it's just doing this on its own. Now, as the Watcher grabs Thor, he screams and teleports somewhere else, just like it happened in Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> No, 
Notice that the Watcher intentionally let Thor bring the severed head of an Ultron bot. It's because this severed head will lead to Killmonger deceiving the team at the end. It's all part of the Watcher's plan. Cut to this pub, which is the exact same location where Peggy and Steve shared a drink. Thor orders a drink from Doctor Strange and starts drinking it immediately. But notice in the next shot, the glass is still full. So this is another clever nod to Thor Ragnarok, where Strange used magic to reveal Thor's drink. The Watcher then explains his plan. I saw the bigger picture. This mission requires a team, the perfect combination of skills and experience that alone will triumph. This actually clears things up a bit as to why the Watcher chose this individual specifically. Well, he could have chosen Tony Stark. He was right there, but decided not to. The Watcher was looking for a specific set of skills that will come in handy for this mission. But Thor calls it a BS and tries to leave. But as soon as he opens the door, he gets hurled into a storm. This is probably a place outside normal time and space. The clock-like pattern and the golden color was probably conjured using Doctor Strange's magic. The Watcher then explains who they're up against and how Ultron was created and what he's capable of doing. While Doctor Strange tells the team what the Infinity Stones are and how they work. Notice how everyone was listening to Strange and the Watcher, but Killmonger over here is simply pondering the possibilities if he can harness the power of these robots. Gamora then unveils the Infinity Crusher. Now in Endgame, we learn that the Infinity Stones cannot be disintegrated into nothing. There will still be leftover atoms, so the best one can do is prevent it from actual use. And that's exactly what this Infinity Crusher will do. So basically their idea is to extract the Soul Stone from Ultron, put it on the Infinity Crusher to kickstart it, and then the Infinity Crusher will take care of the rest. They then all have Chinese food. But notice everyone is using chopsticks, except for Thor. He probably doesn't know how to use it. Strange then casts a protection spell around them. But notice how Killmonger is still staring at the head of the Ultron robot. Now Strange loses control for a second as the beast within him tries to come out. So Strange in this episode not only fought Ultron and protected the whole Guardians of the Multiverse, but also fought against himself to contain these beasts inside of him. Ultron then arrives as he could sense life on this planet. Doctor Strange then casts another spell, giving everyone an extra layer of armor made of magic. Notice the protection spell also incorporates the weapons that they use. For example, Thor's hammer, Gamora's double-edged sword, and Peggy's shield are all covered within the same protection spell. The Watcher then opens a portal for Killmonger and Gamora. They will be on the other end of the spectrum, waiting with the Infinity Crusher. Ultron then crosses the mountain that they were standing on, but thanks to the spell, they don't even get a single scratch. Strange uses the images of Icon spell to multiply Mjolnir into hundreds, and swarm them around Ultron. Looking at this scene, I was thinking just how much better Endgame could have been if Strange did something like this there too. Peggy then distracts Ultron, while T'Challa attacks from behind and steals the Soul Stone. Notice you can actually see the moment T'Challa stole it if you slow down the speed. Although it's not that clear, but we can sense that he did it at this moment. Strange then unleashes three-headed dragon from within him, but it does nothing to Ultron. So he then opens a portal and unleashes thousands of undead. Now the worst zombie among this undead shows up, aka Scarlet Witch. But she actually softens up a bit and sort of fight Ultron. Her being here means Banner actually died in episode 5. Now remember, she has the ability to destroy an Infinity Stone all by herself. So why did she stop? It's probably because she saw the resemblance between this Ultron and her vision. So while Scarlet Witch and Ultron fight, this buys the team some time to escape through their own portal. I like how Thor did a backward jump while entering the portal, just like Star-Lord did back in Infinity War. Cut to Ultron's original universe where they all gather up to crush the Infinity Stones. But this universe's Black Widow doesn't trust them. So Peggy had to share some personal details in order Order to gain back her trust. Your father is Ivan, your da's Alexei. Now what's surprising here is the universe that this Peggy came from, this Black Widow also doesn't know the name of her actual father, so she couldn't have given that information to Peggy. This tells me that Captain Carter is really involved with S.H.I.E.L.D. in her universe. That's how she knows secrets and details about a person that even they are not aware of. Ultron then arrives and tries to snatch the Soul Stone, but Thor throws his hammer and destroys Ultron's right arm. But then Ultron regrows it using the Reality Stone, and notice he also uses the Power Stone meaning he's harnessing the power of both reality and the power stones to create an even stronger arm. Ultron then goes crazy and literally blasts the entire planet. But then the energy from the blast goes in reverse and Strange literally eats it. Why won't you die? Wait, what? Exactly, how did he do it? Well, later in the episode, we will learn that Strange still possesses the Time Stone. So he rewinded Ultron's explosion and then consumed it. Peggy then says, Give him all you've got! Don't give him a chance to think! This is again a great parallel to Avengers Infinity War, where the protagonists tried their best to prevent Thanos from closing his fist. Don't let him close his fist. 
and in this one they're trying to overwhelm Ultron so that he can't think straight, which will prevent him from further using the stones. Notice in this shot, Captain Carter and Widow team up and attack Ultron from both sides. This shot actually gives us an idea just how massive Ultron is. Look at the size of Natasha compared to Ultron. Another great detail from this shot is that Widow is preventing Ultron from using his reign, while Peggy is not allowing Ultron to stand on his ground. This is amazing choreography to be honest. Kudos to the director and the VFX team. Then we get some more epic scenes as Ultron gets bamboozled by each and every Guardians of the Multiverse. Notice they're giving him so little time that just when he prepares to fire a blast or use his weapon, either Thor throws his hammer or a shield hits him or someone flips him physically. So the combination of this team is incredible. Gamora then lands a blow right in the middle of Ultron's chest using Thanos' sword. This is what triggered Ultron the most, as he was forced to use the Time Stone to create a Time Dome. But luckily Strange still has the Eye of Agamotto, through which he breaks the Time Dome and unleashes the beast aka Shuma Gorath. This surprises Peggy Carter, as we've seen her fight the same monster back in episode 1. So she knows how powerful Shuma Gorath is, and seeing this monster stuck inside Strange, Peggy was left speechless. I actually found a detail that will tell you how strong this monstrous being is. Notice the moment Strange invaded Ultron's Time Dome, Strange still hadn't activated his Eye of Agamotto, but still Shuma Gorath was able to enter this energy barrier, while all the other Guardians were literally locked to their places. This shows just how powerful Shuma Gorath is. And notice when Strange gave his all to unleash this monster, the reality was almost splitting, showing us the inner demon inside Strange. This layer shows the outer form of Strange, while the layer underneath shows his true form. And notice even after Strange gained his full demonic form, he still managed to retain his consciousness, and that's why despite becoming a demon, he was still fighting for the good side. They then finally pin down Ultron, and crush all of the Infinity Stones. But not so soon as Ultron gets the upper hand again due to the laws of nature in the MCU. Every universe is different, thus the Infinity Stones are unique. The Crusher was designed to destroy the stones on my world, not his. We get a callback to the OG Avengers with the shot which has been in the promo for quite some time. Natasha then uses the same arrow with Zola's AI from episode 8. This is what she and Clint used to turn an Ultron bot, and now she plans on doing the same again. So while Ultron's focus is entirely on Strange, who he thinks is the main problem, if he gets rid of Strange, the entire team collapses. So Nat and Peggy take advantage of the situation as Widow shoots the arrow dedicating it to Clint Burton, and Captain Carter makes sure it hits exactly where it needs to. Zola's AI manages to defeat Ultron, and notice how it immediately stops the stones from glowing. And then moments later, Ultron dies. But then comes Killmonger with the severed head of the Ultron bot. He was destined to betray the team at the end, the main reason he was chosen in the first place. He summons Ultron's armor around his body, and creates his very own Killmonger Infinity Armor. Killmonger says, The Watcher owes us this. With these stones, we could fix our worlds, our lives. Well, if you have seen episode 6, then you'll know that Killmonger is just spitting BS here. All he wants is power, and it doesn't matter to him who lives or dies. But then Zola appears in Vision's body. So this is finally Marvel paying off Zola's character with his comic accurate look with his face in the belly. Marvel did foreshadow his appearance as a robot years ago in Captain America the First Avenger. Zola and Killmonger then fight between themselves to see who can take the stones. Strange then realizes they were never meant to win, so he creates a pocket dimension and traps both Zola and Killmonger inside it. Strange then confirms it was all part of the Watcher's plan, as he could foresee everything. You foresaw every moment from the failed Infinity Crusher to Killmonger's betrayal and my your sacrifice. Now it has been established that the Watcher can appear in different sizes, but still he always likes to seem bigger than the people he's speaking to. So is there a side to the Watcher that we don't know yet? Does it like to look down on people? Let me know your thoughts on this. They then all go back to their respective realities the exact moment they were taken from, but Peggy thinks she deserves a happy ending and wants to go back to the 40s to enjoy her time with Steve. I guess we'll see more of this in season 2 and of course there's a big reveal in the post credit scene which I'll talk about in a moment. Black Widow then gets her happy ending by returning back to the universe from episode 3, which lost its widow. And notice when Loki pins down Fury, it doesn't turn Fury into something evil. It's because the scepter isn't placed on Fury's heart yet, therefore the stone doesn't activate. Whereas when Widow placed it on Loki's chest, it was exactly on his heart. And I like how Fury immediately realizes this widow is from another universe, instead of thinking she might be an illusion or came back from the dead. This goes to show Fury's excellent judgment of character. Now in the post credit scene, we see the Hydra Stomper, but what's important is what Black Widow says afterwards. And there's someone inside. 
This is probably a hint that it's Steve Rogers who is inside. Steve in episode 1 kinda took the role of the Winter Soldier, so it would make sense for him to reappear again after so many years. And notice the screen on the left may actually indicate that whoever is inside is pretty much alive and breathing. So yes, my bet is on Steve Rogers. Let me know what you think. And that marks the end of What If Season 1. I hope you enjoyed my breakdown of all the episodes. With no new Marvel series until Hawkeye which releases on November 24th, I think I will shift my focus to movies now. Starting with The Matrix, Shang-Chi, Black Widow and of course Venom Let There Be Carnage. And yes, I'll also be breaking down the second trailer of Spider-Man No Way Home, which is probably coming this month. And you can take my words on this, that trailer will break the internet. So please give me a thumbs up which helps me immensely. Grab the subscribe button and turn notifications on. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to get updates about my videos. Till then I'm Kevin Hart and I'll see you lads in the next one. Hang on. Give it a second. I swear, I'm not even moving, it's just doing this on its own.